What up, nerds? This is Reverse World Building, the show for people who wish that mythology had just a little bit more science in it. My name's Moya McTeer, and today we're talking about everyone's... Okay, not everyone's because he's not mine, but a lot of people's favorite Pokemon, Pikachu. Here's what we know about Pikachu. He's a small, rodent-like Pokemon with these red circles on his cheeks that can store and discharge electricity. According to Bulbapedia, Pikachus live in relatively large communities, uh, just like rodents here on Earth. They live in the forest, they eat berries, their tails act as grounding rods so that they don't electrocute everyone around them, unless they mean to, uh, and they can charge up their electric cheeks at night. So let's start imagining what type of planet Pikachu could have realistically evolved on. The interwebs tell me that Pikachu is based on a real animal, just like a lot of other Pokemon. Uh, it's based on the American Pika, which is a rodent that lives in the mountains of western North America. But the American Pika can't shoot electricity from its face, so I'm not going to use it as the basis for Pikachu's evolution on some alien planet. There are a lot of animals here on Earth that can store and shoot off electricity. The most well-known is probably the electric eel. Uh, but I do think that there's a different animal that's a better direct comparison to Pikachu. It's called the Oriental Hornet. It's an unfortunate name. I didn't come up with it, but it's a really cool animal. So uh, it has this yellow stripe on its back uh, that can absorb ultraviolet rays from the sun, or UV rays from the sun, and that creates a difference in electric potential energy. That difference in electric potential energy lets it store the energy from the sun, uh, and then essentially photosynthesize so that it can, like, live and stuff. And the difference between Pikachu and the Oriental Hornet is that the Hornet charges during the day because of sunlight, and Pikachu charges at night. Uh, so that makes me think that Pikachu probably gets all of its uh, UV radiation from light that's reflected off the moon. Our moon reflects about 12% of the sun's light back to us. Uh, that reflectivity is something that astronomers call albedo. So I'm imagining that this planet's moon has a very high albedo. It's very reflective. That way Pikachu can get a lot of light so that it can charge its electric cheeks. Um, I'm also imagining that this planet has a lot of moons uh, to take care of the moon phase problem. So if this planet only had one moon, then yeah, Pikachu could get a lot of reflected light during the full moon, uh, but what about new moon or quarter moon or any of the other phases where the moon isn't reflecting as much light as it possibly can? If this planet has a lot of moons, then there can be a, a new moon, a full moon, a quarter moon, all at the same time, and Pikachu can uh, be sure that it's going to get all of the reflected light that it needs to keep its electric cheeks charged. Probably the easiest way to get a very reflective moon is to have the moon have a lot of ice on its surface. So I'm imagining that this planet has uh, several ice-covered rocky moons uh, that are reflecting light from the sun back to the planet so that Pikachu can get enough light. But if Pikachu is getting all of its UV radiation from light reflected off of the moons, there must be something blocking the light from the sun during the day. And the easiest way to do that is with thick clouds, like rain clouds, that come from water on the surface being evaporated by the sun, uh, very similar to the flying river that you see over the Amazon. Pikachu is an electric Pokemon. Uh, electricity and water don't mix well, uh, so we don't want it to rain over Pikachu's habitat. And a really great way to avoid rain is to get the clouds out of there uh, as soon as possible to make sure that the clouds are moving quickly. And one way to do that is, is coming from this really interesting effect uh, that you get when you mess with the rotation speed of a planet. So if you if you slow down the rotation speed of a planet, then the sun is shining on parts of the planet longer. Uh, those parts that are directly facing the sun get hotter because they're getting longer periods of sunlight, and then more water can evaporate. And as the planet slowly rotates, the clouds will be pushed by the wind, uh, and it'll follow the sun. So from your location on this Pikachu planet, uh, as the sun sets, the clouds will also 
uh, move off of you before they get a chance to, to rain down on your Pikachu parade. So that means that during the day, you won't see any sunlight because you're covered by clouds, and then those will go away at night. You'll get a lot of nice light from the moons, you know, reflecting uh, off the moons to the surface of the planet, and the Pikachus can recharge their electric cheeks. It also means that it's going to be pretty cold at night because you're going longer without getting any heat or light from the sun if you have this slow rotation period. This would explain why Pikachus are chubby. Uh, you know, they're, they're cute, they have a lot of fat deposits, and it would explain why they live in these tight-knit close communities. Uh, rodents can stay close together to stay warm, they can share food resources. Uh, so yeah, what I'm picturing for the Pikachu planet is that it has a lot of um, ice-covered moons orbiting it, it has a slow rotation period so that the clouds can uh, follow the sun more easily and more reliably than they do here on Earth. Um, and that all together will take care of Pikachu charging its electric cheeks at night. It'll take care of uh, how Pikachu lives in these close communities and, and their, their body type, how they're, they have a lot of fat deposits. So. Um, yeah, that's my Pikachu planet. If you like this video, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss another one when it comes out. And if you have ideas for other mythical creatures that I can reverse world build, then write that in the comments and I'll put it on my list. But um, thanks for watching.